is brought to you by Local Video Magazine. In association with CoachChick.com This is Kim Lucard, Hockey Mom RD, and today I'm going to share another excerpt of my five day Eat Skate Win Summer Challenge. Today I'm going to be talking about two fueling habits that'll help you improve focus on the ice. Two killers of focus are low blood sugar and lack of omega 3 fatty acids in your skater's meal plan. Remember, in hockey, plays happen in seconds. Games are won or lost in seconds, and the ability to focus on the game will give your skater the edge. 
your youth ice hockey player may get too busy at times and they may forget to eat like this little stomach here saying no food it needs food but yet sometimes they're so focused maybe they're focused on a project they're working in school or maybe they're focused on the game they're playing with their friends they need to learn how to pay attention to fueling their bodies like they are the youth athlete that they want to be when they get on the ice you don't want them skipping meals or snacks because this can result in low blood sugar. And if your skater experiences low blood sugar, it can make them feel tired, shaky. They can have a headache. They can get sweaty and confused. They feel sleepy. Their legs may shake. They can become very irritable. And they can even pass out or worse, have a seizure. You do not want any of this happening to your skater during a practice or a game, or for that matter, any time during the day. Some focus foods include some yogurt, like these Chobani Champion Tubes. They're rich in carbohydrates and protein. Some great blueberries, rich in a long sustaining carbohydrate to keep them focused. Some multigrain Cheerios, again, a long sustaining carbohydrate. And some salmon, rich in omega 3 fatty acids. The research on omega-3 fatty acids shows it decreases inflammation in the body, increases attention, decreases reaction time, and helps the brain heal after concussion. Now, please note, it does not help prevent a concussion, but taking omega-3 fatty acids daily can help your skater or other youth athlete in the family. It'll help their brain heal after a concussion. Now, your omega-3 fatty acids are going to vary based on your child's age. And as you look at this slide, you will see that as your child increases in age, the amount that they need also increases. And once they get to their teen years, there is a difference between what young boys need and young girls need. Studies have shown that athletes who consume omega-3 fatty acids they need a two to one ratio of the EPA to the DHA. They benefit by increasing their attention and decreasing their reaction time. So on the ice, this creates a skater that is quick and focused with their decisions and actions during a game time. Some foods that are rich in omega-3 fatty acids include fatty fish like salmon, tuna, herring, or mackerel. You could also have grass-fed beef, edamame, flax seed oil and flax seeds, chia seeds, enriched eggs. You just have to read the label. Some foods are now enriched with omega-3s. Walnuts, if there's no nut allergy. And certain foods are fortified with omega-3 fatty acids like milk, juice, and yogurt. So always check the label to be certain if there's more omega-3s or there's added omega-3 fatty acids in the particular food. Now, on any given night, if your skater consumes a three ounce serving of salmon, which is about just your adult palm size, that's going to provide them with 1500 milligrams of omega-3 fatty acids. Actually, I often recommend salmon on tournament weekends at the end of the day to help the skater keep their omega-3s high level during the tournament weekend. And you want to aim for two, three to four ounce servings of fish a week. Now you might be thinking, okay, my kid's allergic to fish or they're vegan or they don't like fish. There are other foods that you can use to help your skater get the amount of omega-3s that they need every day. Now you wanna refer back to the chart that I showed you. That's the minimum amount that they need. Aim for that amount for starters. There are foods on the market that are fortified with omega-3 fatty acids. Eggs are a good example. Flax seeds and chia seeds can be ground up and added to smoothies topped on cereals or salad for the vegan hockey player or if your skater is allergic to fish because if they're allergic to fish you certainly don't want them taking fish oil supplements either and a real scary statistic here is that most children in the united states are consuming less than 100 milligrams of omega-3 fatty acids every day look back at that chart and you see that if that's the case with your skater they are drastically behind in this nutrient that they need for focus in the classroom and focus and performance on the ice. Make omega-3 fatty acids a part of your skater's daily meal plan to improve their overall health 
athletic and academic performance. And remember, small changes add up every day to big changes on the ice. You don't have to try to be perfect, just get started. Visit www.hockeymomrd.com to enroll in the five day Eat Skate Win Summer Challenge today. This is Kim Lucard, Hockey Mom RD. Happy skating till next time. Mr. Resistance Band Train.com. Welcome to the band gym today. You know, when it comes to squatting, it really comes down to knowing how to hip hinge really well. And for a hip hinge, you know, it's being able to bend right at your hips so your low back doesn't have to go ahead and take so much of the burden of the weight and the forces. Yeah, by going ahead and hip hinging, I'm immediately going to go ahead and load my butt. It's going to put my quads and my knees and my ankles in a much better position. And it's good because my back is going to stay relatively straight, if I have a weight on my shoulders or if I'm vertically loaded, that spine is going to be able to absorb those forces much better. The problem is, not very many people hip hinge well. So what I've got for you today is a very simple video on how you can go ahead and implement five exercises that I've found are great for hip hinging. I've actually used this workout a lot to warm up before I squat. Yeah, and so go ahead and try that. But you know what's funny about it is? It comes down to just simply this. Just taking a band, hooking it up to something, placing it at your hips, and guess what? The band's gonna teach you automatically how to hip hinge. Now you just gotta apply these exercises that I'm about to show you. So enjoy the video. Matter of fact, if you like the video, make sure you do that. Make sure you like the video. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, please do. And lastly, guys, go to resistancebandtraining.com if you wanna see a lot more information on how to use Continuous loop bands to get better. As exciting as the slap shot might be, 
realize that almost every league's top scorers rack up their points by either making moves on goaltenders or by surprising them with quick shots. The reason? Because quickness and accuracy matter a whole lot more than sheer power when it comes to beating that master man. Also, know that while I'll provide a checklist of key points for enhancing the wrist shot, my approach to training tends to get better and quicker results because I usually focus on the most influential parts of a given skill. Finally, you'll probably notice that I often refer to the wrister as a sweep shot. I do this intentionally hoping to emphasize the powerful sweeping motion that's needed to really propel the puck. As a preliminary, let me cover what almost every coach sees as the key points in taking a wrist shot. Set up on something close to a 45 degree angle to the target. For added strength, slide the lower hand slightly downward on the stick shaft. Hold the stick with a firm grip. Start by positioning the puck back beyond the rear skate. Hold the puck near the middle of the stick blade. Tip the blade at a slight angle to cradle the puck and to cock the wrist. Eventually, get so you can look at your target from this posture. Sweep hard with the blade to send the puck towards the target. As you sweep, Shift your weight from the rear foot to the front foot. Snap the wrist as the puck leaves the blade. And finish the sweep with a follow through of the blade right towards the target. Now, let me address the few points that I feel really matter when initially developing this skill. A great deal of force in this shot comes from a long sweeping motion. So, I initially emphasize holding the puck back quite a ways. The sweeping motion also has to be pretty powerful. So, here are a couple of tips that can really help in this area. Know that most of the force in any hockey shot comes from the bending and subsequent springing back of a stick's shaft. So, before a player can expect to shoot with any real power, he must use a stick that he can bend or flex in this manner. I have my players first develop their gripping and sweeping motions with small weights. I use metal weights off ice while plastic, sand-filled ones work best on the ice. And depending on the age group, I generally use weights that are between two and a half and five pounds. The idea here isn't to make players stronger, but I find that the slight resistance against their sticks helps my students gain a better sense of how they need to grip and move the stick in order to generate real power. I next used leaded pucks as a transition between the heavy weights and the traditional puck. A little later, after my players have worked against resistance for a time, I'll introduce this sweeping exercise done without a puck. Simply, I have my students pretend they have a puck, starting far back and then pulling with a hard sweep. It's at this time that I'll also introduce the wrist snapping action that provides the final force. Actually, I find that a lot of beginners start this movement on their own 
as they work with the weights and with the weighted pucks. As you can see here, this player pretends to cut and then simultaneously snaps the wrists and opens the stick blade to give the imaginary puck some lift. As the powerful sweeping motion and wrist snap come together, I'll start to focus on the rearward to forward rocking that makes this a total body movement. So it's rock back and pull the puck back. Then rock forward and pull the puck as hard as possible. Rock back and then rock forward to pull and then snap the puck. In actuality, the mechanics of the backhand shot are almost the same as a sweep or wrist shot. Of course, the puck is held on the back of the blade instead of the front. Assuming a 45 degree angle to the target is also true, except that a player should turn and put his back towards that target area. So again, in my simplified approach, attempt a long sweep from as far back as possible. At the end of the sweep, try a quick wrist snap and then a follow through towards the target. I might also add that the weights and weighted pucks work well with the back anchor, as do most of my other practice ideas. I hope you appreciate why I developed the specific drills outlined here, why I sequenced them as I did, as well as why I focus on certain elements over others. I mean, in the initial learning stages, players shouldn't be worrying about too many things. As a matter of fact, it's proper, as we attempt to teach or learn almost any given skill, that we attack the major parts of the movement first. Then, once each of those major parts are learned, we can work to further perfect the skill by comparing it with some of the finer parts, as in those 11 key points. Now, I know of no other way to improve shooting skills except to shoot and shoot and shoot. As a matter of fact, this skill doesn't require ice time to be learned and perfected. And notice that I managed to get a lot more work accomplished by having my players work separately, rather than having them wait in long lines to get their turn. Also, while it's a good idea to initially practice any shots from a stationary position, know that a player has to ultimately be able to pull the trigger on the go. So a logical next step is to practice often while moving. Then, returning to our 11 key points, let me emphasize one that should take on more and more significance. That is, that top players can handle a puck and take shots with their eyes up. After all, a goaltender's position changes from second to second, which means that the target also changes. So another training tool I use is this simulated goaltender. It doesn't move and actually make saves, but it does give players instant feedback. Finally, our game is fast and furious and scoring opportunities become increasingly difficult as players get older and better. So, I'll eventually use all sorts of practice conditions to increase the difficulty of getting off a shot.
This has been a local video marketing production. We hope you've enjoyed this, and that you've picked up a number of great hockey tips. Please do tell some friends about these shows, and let the contributing coaches know how much you appreciate them.